Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Power Book 3 Raising Canaan Season 2, Episode 3. This episode is sponsored by Darth Vader, who loves to tell people that he is their father and have very dramatic reactions on the other side. I think that's going to be a really good story this season. They're rolling it out nice and slow where, you know, Howard's kind of picking away a little bit of the trust that Keenan has with his mom a little bit at a time because he could have just like slapped those DNA results down and been like, you know, hey, you, you know, try to argue this science is science, right? But he hasn't done that. Howard, Howard's playing this game, I think, in a really interesting way. I mean, we had two different conversations between him and Keenan in this episode. We're going to talk about that the ramifications of that mm -hmm. other trust issues that are forming with rock and canaan yep. big surprise there based on what she didn't tell him but yep. okay go ahead hit that subscribe button you know we are here with all sorts of great raising canaan stuff through mm -hmm. the rest of this season also we are doing house of the dragon as well for those of you who are diving into that a really great premiere and if you've been watching animal kingdom it's the series finale tonight. Yeah. We're covering that as well. And we'll have a video up after the episode and follow us over on our Instagram, Matt and Jess TV. Okay, let, let's just get right into this Kanan and Howard stuff. Because to me, this is the best stuff in this episode. Yeah, it's it's really good. Because, like I said, he could have very easily just brought the DNA results to Kanan. Yeah. Like he talked to Rock earlier, where he was like, I have the DNA. You can't argue science, yeah. Rock. Like, I'm, I'm his father. And so there's not really anything you can do. And I was pretty surprised that... In that episode, she went back and doubled down on her lie to Kanan about it, where she knows that those results exist. Howard has taken another approach. He, he sat in the car with him and was like, yeah. listen, I'm just going to straight tell you I'm your father. This is the way that is. Your mom's probably going to spin this story that I'm crazy or this or whatever, whatever. But I'm telling you, like, this is what it is. Kanan's like, can I go now? <laughs> and he leaves. Yeah. But it's just enough yeah. for him to have that conversation with his mom be like listen uh howard came to me and told me this and she just starts laughing she doubles down on her lie again yeah he's crazy he's got amnesia he's you know a cop so you can't trust him you know we all know what you did to him so you know you really gotta just stay stay away from him howard coming that second time yeah. It was so well done because that was really the moment where it really unraveled things for Kanan. I just really think Rock's got to, I don't know, do a cost-benefit analysis in her head or something about, like, what's the benefit of keeping these lies going when you know that Howard has the proof that he needs? He has <laughs> all of this evidence. I mean, even regardless of the DNA results, which are clearly the smoking gun in all of this, mm -hmm. but... He still also can play the fact that, oh, by the way, Kanan, I remember that you were the one who yeah. shot me. I remember everything, and I'm going to let it go for now. I ain't going to tell anybody because I'm your dad, and, you know, I care for you, son. Which is, like, what he did at the end of this episode. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen for Kanan if he figures out the truth? Like, Rock needs to sort of think a lot about this. I think Howard saying that to Kanan is really the thing that's going to sit on Kanan's heart yeah. because his mom is like, oh, he's crazy. He doesn't remember anything. Don't worry. I got you. For Howard to be like, listen, yeah. I know that you did this to me and I'm not going to do anything because you're my son. You're my family. It didn't come across as I know what you did. It's a blackmail. Yeah. It, it was a very genuine, listen, you did what you did. I've got your back. I'm your father. We're going to get through this together. Just sit on that. He's he's planting a little more, a little more, a little more so that he doesn't have to just bring the DNA and be like, okay, here we go. Here Here's the results. Yeah. Just, you know, let's move forward. I think he, he wants to build a connection. I think that is a little bit more organic than that. And I think he doesn't yeah. want to have to just rely on a sheet of paper. And I think the, the worst fear I think that Rock has is that she's worried about losing her son like i think she really as much as she has everything else going on in her life like you know kanan is a constant for her and i think she probably has this sort of underlying fear that okay if 
Howard comes in, very different life from mine, very different sort of set of priorities than me. Like, what is this going to do to my relationship with Kanan? But she's not thinking this through that I think the thing that's going to hurt her relationship with Kanan the most is if he can't trust her. And that's where the other part of this comes in with Scrappy. Yeah, I think the biggest issue that Rock is stuck on yeah. is that what her relationship with Howard was and that she was working with him and that it's a situation where she doesn't want that to come out because I think if that comes out that unravels her whole business that could unravel things with her son where he might not look at her the same way it was a very long time ago but sometimes those things stick with you forever where people are like oh okay you did this well what's to stop you from doing this now sort of thing and of course she also just doesn't want a cop with her business, you know, and he's sort of around all the time. That's not going to be helpful to her where it's like, oh, this cop's coming over all the time. Oh, he's Kanan's dad. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, no. This is going to get really messy. Like, this is the thing I most enjoy is how messy this is going to be. Because, you know, guess what? Howard's not going away anytime soon. And if you do something to kill him at this point, Rock, and I mean, I know you've already tried through Kanan, but like if you do something else now that Kanan knows what he knows, like that's going to throw an even bigger wrench into things. That's going to sow even more distrust and you're going to yeah. lose your son entirely. Well, and on top of it, everything that happened with Scrappy yeah. because they're saying that he did this to himself. That, yeah. you know, oh, he was found. He couldn't take it anymore. And this is this is what he decided to do. And Kane is just like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. This is, I know him. We've known him forever. He's been with this family since he's 14 years old. So they've known each other almost all of Kenan's life <laughs> since he was a baby. So uh, he knows him and he knows in his heart that Scrappy wouldn't do this. So this is, he's got a couple of things where he's just like ready to dig in a little bit deeper and all roads are leading back to his mom. Here's the thing that Rock needs to realize. If Famous is telling Kanan something before you, Famous is like the most disconnected person entirely who's just thinking about himself, the drugs he's going to take, the women he's going to be with, and now trying to find a place to live. If he is suddenly the informant instead of you, it is a big, big oh, problem. I feel really bad for Famous. I mean, he's in such a bad way. Yeah. Like, seeing Crown come up and be like, listen, I'm going to talk to somebody, see if I can maybe help you. That hug where he's just like, basically like you're saving my life. I was yeah. like, oh my God. Like it's it's such a hard, difficult situation. And we've seen Kanan trying to help him too. He stole a little bit from his mom to yeah. sell a little bit, to be able to help get him any kind of money he's able to. I mean, things are really going, These everybody's on bad choice road here <laughs> yeah. for the, you know, quote, better call Saul. Everybody's going down this road. And Kanan and Rock are both going down this road hard because, you know, he's ripping her off a little bit. You yeah. know, she's lying to him. I think we're really headed towards this huge confrontation by the end of this season. Yeah, like him ripping her off. Like that is going to be really really messy like i i am kind of visualize in my head this whole like who did this what did they do i tell you when i find out the truth about this yeah. and if Kanan doesn't mess up to it early it's gonna be bad i'm gonna put it out there that i think if Kanan went to his mom and just said listen i know that jukebox is here and we're doing what we can for someone else already for the family and i know yeah. famous is not your family but i really want to help him out is there something I could do for you where you would be able to give me this so that I can help him? And then even if she's like, no, that's not the way, she may have been able to come up with something else to be like, okay, what if we did A, B, and C instead? Because Rock is someone who does want to help people. Like, yes, yeah, she's doing everything with her business or whatever, but you know, Jukebox needed a place to stay right away. I understand family. But Famous has been around, like, all of Kanan's life. He's someone who's very important and important to the family. And I think that if she knew a bit more of what was going on, that she might have been able to figure something out. 
I agree. I, I just think ultimately, you know, famous can be annoying. He can be over the top. He can be selfish, but I don't think famous is some terrible influence. I don't no. think he's like inherently a bad guy or no. anything like that. I think she would help famous out as long as, you know, Kanan did something <laughs> for her in return or did something to sort of show, you know, I appreciate you doing this for my friend who, you know, she's seen him around for so much of her own life at this point. He is kind of family in that way. Okay, speaking of appreciation, I want to just take a moment to talk about the music in this episode <laughs> and the storyline that they're maybe kind of starting to put together for Jukebox yeah. between Lou and Crown and her and everything that's going on, just listening to her in the studio and having that talk with her afterwards. It was really interesting because, you know, a crown is just going to put it out there and be yep. like, listen, your lyrics are amazing, beautiful, your voice, amazing, beautiful, but we need to change what you look like. And I think that this commentary is extremely important because not only back then, but for now too, this yep. hasn't changed for women and for men in the music industry and in the entertainment industry yeah. in general, but definitely in the music industry. And Back then at that time, sort of late 80s, early 90s kind of thing, that was happening a lot where it was very specifically you had to have a look. And if you didn't have a look, you ended up in this situation with like Black Box, if you guys remember them, where they had like had this French model who was the singer, but she really wasn't singing at all. And they had somebody else doing the vocals or Millie Vanilli, you know, two good looking guys, but they weren't singing at all. Someone else that was really prevalent around that time. So bringing in this storyline, I'm kind of like, are they going a little bit in this direction? Because that was very prevalent in that time or is it more about the commentary of sort of jukebox being like yeah i i hear what you're saying but i don't <laughs> care i look like what i look like and i'm fine with what i look like you know i'm a beautiful girl the way that i am so bye i think it's probably a little bit of both in my mind because i'm just sort of sitting here thinking that i mean we know that jukebox's talent is obviously like a million percent there yep but we also know where she ends up going in the original power. Like, do. she does not become some sort of big music sensation. So this could be, you know, an incident where she loses some of her confidence. She loses some of her ability to really project herself out there as an artist. Like, she said <laughs> she's happy with what she looks like and who she is. And she very, very much should be. Mm -hmm. I just, I worry about someone like Crown, who I just think he's, going to do something to sabotage her if he doesn't get his way. It feels yeah. like it's, uh, you know, if you follow my teachings, I will make you a star. And if you don't, I will ruin you. He just feels like one of those guys. Yeah, and Crown, again, doesn't come across as someone who's like all bad or yeah. all good. We saw that moment with Famous where he's like, let me help you out. And, you know, even Lou and Crown having that conversation afterwards where it's kind of like, okay, you're not exactly wrong. There does need to be a certain look at this time in this industry, but you can't talk to people that way. It's yeah. sort of just like, you know, that tact in speaking a little bit differently about when you're going to come to somebody and be like, listen, you know, we need to change what you're wearing or what you look like because nobody wants to hear that. And really nobody should have to hear that. Crown has just, like, no tact whatsoever, because he's also, like, no. going to rock in this episode and just being like, I want you to take Lulu out of this business. Bold. I, yeah, I want you to just go ahead, buy up a share of the... It's, it's fine, we'll do this, and then I just want... I, I don't want any other advice. Yeah, like, I get that him and Lou are having, like, a little bit of back and forth with the business but it i didn't think that it had gotten to this point where crown is just like listen i'll sell you a bit of this business you wash your money through this you can just yeah. get lou off my back just take him back into your business solely and everybody's happy except lou <laughs> Okay, here's one thing I'm not going to be happy about if they go down this road and i say this as you know i love most of the stories this season 
if they pair up Marvin and his anger management instructor, yeah, no, they're going to. I am going to be so annoyed. It just feels like we've seen this story of like, oh, here's somebody with the conflict of interest who's suddenly yeah. hooking up with the kid. Like, it's even it's even too much like Ghost and Angela for me. It's just like, I don't need this. Okay, everybody put on your hard hats because that's where we're headed. It's absolutely <laughs> happening. There's not enough romance going on. And this show likes to have that. So, you know, uh, that's where we're going with it. But I will say that I am really enjoying Marvin's story with just the anger management. Yeah. Like, we've seen him really resistant to it. We all know that he needs some sort of help. Back in that time period, people were not yeah. getting help for anything. It was really not a thing that was happening for anybody. It was very difficult to get that help or to even go for that help. So the fact that he's even doing that is good. We saw him actually use some of the techniques and he was just like, hmm, okay, this actually works, which was a really good step because we later saw that sort of heartbreaking scene with his brother where he's yeah. like, jukebox ever talk about me? No. Oh, uh, you know, I don't care anyways. You know, it's still a work in progress, but him being like, I really messed that up. We're all like, yeah, you did. Yeah, you really, really did. And it's like that specific stuff that you spoke about is like, that's that's why we don't need this love interest no, part of don't. this if it goes that way. Because like this other stuff is so good on its own. Like the stuff with the elevator and him like doing the deep breathing right outside of it. And he's just like... Let me help you out there. And it, it, like, there's obviously such a, there's always a little bit of inherent comedy with Marvin as a character, but it's also like we know how bad things get when they sort of turn on the dime. So it's, it, it's what made that payoff all the more better in that moment. And yeah, this is not a situation where we can sort of just like wave a magic wand and say that Marvin is cured, but no. he's, he, he's on a road towards something. He's just got to realize that. Shootbox is not going to be that forgiving of what he did. And she shouldn't be that forgiving of what he did because it was horrible. And it, it's going to take a really long time. Yeah, and she's in a really strange situation right now anyways. Because she has everything that's going on with her dad. She doesn't yeah. really know about the classes or what he's going through. That he is actually making some progress. He's at the beginning, but he's, yeah. he's making progress. But then she's also sort of... She hasn't had a confrontation with her mom yet. But she she followed her into a church, sees that what Rock said is true. She's an amazing singer. And then she turns around and sees Jukebox staying there. Jukebox runs off and she runs after her. So she knows who she is. There's just so much good stuff happening on this show right now. Yeah. From top to bottom. Like, we haven't even gotten to your guy, I Unique. I know. Okay, so this whole storyline, we saw Unique go in. Talk to Juliana, take her, take all Rock's money, all for this big confrontation at the end where Unique asked for something that I didn't expect. And because his character is so wonderfully written and so yeah. beautifully acted, I don't know if he's telling the <laughs> truth about this. So he ended up asking for peace. He's basically like, listen... I don't want to be in a situation where you and your people are after me for the rest of my life. I've got my family going on. I just want to have my little, you know, slice of the pie over here where I'm not working in this industry anymore. I'm moving into some other business. I just want to be with my family and I want you to leave me alone. But I needed you to know that I can get to you anytime. So there has to be a reason for you to want to give this to me. And I'm just like, are you really looking for peace or are you looking for peace because you need time to be able to rebuild without any of rocks people looking at you and i hope that it's the second one and it's not because i want anything to happen to rock but i love the volleying back and forth and yeah. back and forth between these two because they're both very smart I do not want a rest of a season of just watching Joey as an actor just like sit around in a room somewhere and just like hanging out. Like I need Or him. not have him at all because yeah. if he just has peace then what's the story left? I don't want to lose him. Yeah. Like I my my theory on it right now is I think he is trying to buy his time, but I I think However he rebuilds, I think he's going to do it in a very different way than how he did it the first time around mm -hmm. because I think he wants to be sort of surprising with it and i think he needs 
this piece right now. I mean, it was a it, it's a really good story because it is like so ambiguous, and he has reasons to not want to get into this anymore. But he also, I think, is going to have that sort of pull where he's been sort of the king on top of the throne and like that not have that anymore and to see rock like run everything he used to have like that's gonna be really hard on him mentally yeah and i mean in general rock's got some problems going on too and like even in one of those scenes where we saw at the building we heard somebody talking about unique as well about saying that his product was better and that what Rock is putting out there is not the same quality of what Unique was. So they're planting some seeds in there already of sort of even just the the buyers that want Unique back and want what he was doing back. That there's, if people haven't just moved on from him. The last thing I got to say here, Detective Burke. You in danger. I don't know how it's going to happen, but you're in danger this season with what you're up to. I, this is a hard one for me because during the first season, I really liked her character and I liked sort of the story they had for her. This season, I'm kind of like, why are you digging into <laughs> your partner's like kind of personal life? A little bit about, you know, more about the shooting, of course, like you're going to his house dude you guys work together like you're not you don't need to be digging this far into his life like why are you doing this to him you know as many of you i don't like the storyline i'm sorry we're 21 minutes <laughs> in fine. i am not into the storyline no well here is where we can coin a new term you know we cover the blacklist a lot at this channel yep. i'm gonna start calling this the elizabeth keen where your storyline basically just turns into you demanding answers and doing whatever you can to get them, regardless of like whatever the personal stakes or consequences are to you. And they're pretty big for yeah. Burke. Yeah, and I thought that they had really set up this really good story yeah. for her in season one with Jukebox and this sort of back and forth with them. I I just feel like I I wanted to see more of that this season and maybe it'll be more next season of where sort of burke ends up becoming sort of the mentor that brings her into the police force like she doesn't need this i need to pull apart my partner's life because why <laughs> i need answers about someone else like go about your own business yeah just 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 chill out a little bit burke it's it's, it's all gonna be <laughs> okay well we will wrap up this video now but go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more yeah. raising cane and discussion house yeah. of the dragon animal kingdom series finale thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you here next time